Hello and welcome back and today we want to talk about two two bay NAS solutions. We want to look at last year's uh, Nimbus Store 2, a very surprising NAS that came out of nowhere and was very, very popular from the guys at Acer Store, the Nimbus Store 2. We're going to compare it against the brand new Synology, the DS720 Plus. It's their latest two bay, probably one of the most powerful and well equipped two bays that Synology have ever put out there. So today we want to answer two or three particular questions. First and foremost, which one of these two deserves your data? That's probably going to be paramount. The second thing is, what are your priorities as a NAS buyer? Software, hardware, maybe a little bit of both. And thirdly, what exactly makes up the £100 price difference between these two devices? With a, such a large margin of difference in their retail price, wherever you are in the world, we need to know why there's that difference and can you make a bit of a saving? So, Let's talk about these two NAS devices. Both of these two bays do arrive with a lot of things in common. And if one of the things that you're looking for in your network attached solution is in the list I'm about to say, then chances are either one of these will probably do the job for you to a greater or lesser extent. First and foremost, they both arrive with the BTRFS file system, which means that with everything from background snapshots having less of an impact on your resources, file self-healing, and faster shared folder duplication, there's lots of ways in which you can take advantage of that for your network environment as you grow and see the benefits. On top of that, both devices have got their own dedicated graphical user interface available via a web browser, as well as mobile apps and desktop applications too, on iOS, Android, Windows, and Mac. They both arrive with DSM and ADM, both of which are the latest revisions of their operating system for each platform, and with the added bonus that both of them are incredibly intuitive, very user-friendly, and allow you to install lots of different mobile applications. They both arrive with a surveillance application that allows you to connect IP cameras in your home or network uh, business network environment, and allow you to have recordings happening simultaneously while you view them. There's alerts, security protocol, and more. They both arrive with um, backup tools that allow you to synchronize and backup between cloud platforms, other NASes, USB, and more. They both arrive with photo applications, video applications, uh, music applications, and more, as well as a myriad of third-party applications as well. They both arrive with Intel-based processors and DDR4 memory, which means Plex Media Server is available on both of these, with 4K and 1080p native transcoding on the table, and Plex transcoding to a slightly lesser degree. They both arrive with applications to work with Windows Server. They both arrive with the ability to have virtual machines using Synology Virtual Machine Manager and VirtualBox. They both arrive with iTunes Server. They both arrive with WordPress Server. They both arrive with Minecraft Server. They both arrive with a huge number of applications for you. So that's what they've got in common. Let's talk about why they differ. Now, the release time between them does make a bit of a difference. First and foremost, the Nimbus Store, which has uh, arrived summer of 2019, still has a lot of hardware advantages inside it that make it competitive today. It arrives with that Intel CPU, and that's a dual-core J4005 base processor. That's a um, 2.0 gigahertz CPU that can be burst up to 2.7. It also arrived with 2 gig of DDR4 uh, 2400 megahertz memory. It also arrives on the rear with 2.5 GBE, which is always impressive, along with an HDMI 2.0 port. So again, 4K at 60 frames per second. And over here, as mentioned, 2.5 GBE on each, which can be link aggregated to give you up to 5 GBE or 500 megabytes per second external speeds. On top of that, USB 3 for support with peripherals, storage devices, and more. And it supports SATA-based hard drives, and those SATA-based hard drives go up to 16 terabytes currently from Seagate Ironwolf. So, a huge amount of potential there in the Nimbus store. What does the Synology bring to the table one year later? Well, it supports those two hard drives. It supports SATA-based 16 TB hard drives, which is always good. It also arrives with NVMe SSD caching. On the base of the device, we have the ability to add NVMe SSDs into this bay, allowing you to improve the internal performance speeds with SSD caching, either one or two as needed. On top of that, you don't have to put in one drive, uh, two drives, you can put in one and expand gradually over time. And although both of them support JBoard, RAID 1 and RAID 0, the Synology also supports Synology Hybrid RAID, which allows you to mix and match drives within your hardware system environment. 
on the rear, we have got two 1GB ports, so it does lose out on the network external port to the Nimbus store. And although there is a USB 3 port, there's also eSATA for expanding your device. The Nimbus store can be expanded with USB expansions, but the Synology utilizes eSATA expansions in the form of the DX517. So they do seem very, very similar. And on a hardware level, there is no avoiding the fact that the brand new um, Synology does arrive with largely better hardware in the majority of senses. But all of those performance benefits seem to be internal. The internal CPU, the better memory at two gig of DDR4 2666 megahertz, the Intel CPU, the J4125, which is a quad core 2.0 gigahertz CPU that can be burst up to 2.7. And although both of them arrive with 4K and 1080p transcoding support, they both have HD Graphics 600, the CPU benchmark score on the Synology is much higher. The NVMe SSD um, base there that give you internal operation improvement all mean that the internal speeds of the Synology are excellent. But that's internal. And the external speeds are always going to limit you to 2GBE max. And that's with link aggregation, remember, all your connected users at the same time, that's what they're sharing if they're all connecting at once, which can be quite limiting. Now, the 2.5 GB or 5 GB with link aggregation is already a much bigger step up in terms of external speeds. On top of that, it also has, a there is an Acer Store 2.5 GB to, to USB adapter and a 5 GB to USB adapter available for this device to add further network connections. On top of that, the internal speeds, although it doesn't have M2 SSD cache, that CPU and memory will still give you quite a lot of throughput. And the graphical enabled CPU with that embedded graphics, that um, UHD 600, does mean you are going to get very good performance internally. Maybe not quite as high as that on the other one. And this is a dual core versus a quad core, but it's still going to be pretty good with that memory upgradable to 8 gig and only 6 gig on the Synology. So, in terms of hardware, it's a flat tie because this device does pretty good internal speeds and excellent internal. This has excellent internal, external. So I think we have to call it a bit of a tie. Now, it's in software where we see huge amounts of distinction between them. The Nimbus Store does arrive with ADM and all of its applications. It arrives with a myriad of different tools available in the first and third party format. And there's an HDMI output tool called AD, uh, ADM Portal or Acer Store Portal that allows you to store uh, and access applications with a remote control. There's a mobile app and there's also a connectable remote. And you can view uh, your surveillance, your VMs, Plex, Kodi, streaming tools and apps and add-ons via HDMI simultaneously while other users are connected via the network and the internet. Now, the Synology does not have the third-party app support that the Nimbus Store does, but it does have enormous first-party support. They have got the most first-party apps I've ever seen from any NAS brand, and these are real workable alternatives to modern-day third-party apps. If you like Microsoft Office 365 or Google Docs, you're going to like Synology Office. If you like Skype and WhatsApp, you're going to like Synology Chat. Synology Surveillance Station on this is one of the best surveillance tools I've ever seen. And although the Nimbus Store has great backup apps, they're nowhere near as good as that of Active Backup. I'm sorry, uh, not Active. Uh, yeah, Active Backup Suite and Hyper Backup on the Synology. Again, with virtual machines, the Nimbus Store has support of virtual um, virtual box, which is great, but the Synology, it has Synology Virtual Machine Manager, it has, they both have Docker, but VMs are just going to run better on this device. Now, what is ultimately its core strength, its first party apps and its first party support, is sort of, it's also its weakness to a degree, because the Synology's support of its own first party apps is almost a hindrance to those that want a more configured setup. Let me explain. If you do want to utilize this device for your data, what you'll find all too often is you have to put data in the preset folders that Synology requests you to do. You've got file management and you can browse all the files and folders and it will index them. But for certain key applications like Synology Moments, the AI powered photo recognition tool, or Synology, Mo uh, sorry, um, Synology Drive, um, Synology Chat, a lot of the time the files and folders have to be in preset, pre designated locations because the apps index those preset locations. The Nimbus Store allows you a lot more configuration, a lot more choice in that setup. 
it will require a little bit more of a learning curve but not that much more and there's a lot more customization on the Nimbus store than there is on the Synology. I'm not going to say the Nimbus store is a slicker platform the Synology is definitely the slicker and it also arrives with great app support and a much smoother user interface overall. ADM's pretty close but it's not as close and I think for a lot of you as your first NAS who want a frictionless setup you're probably going to favour the Synology. So where has that £100 extra gone? Well of course some of it's gone into the hardware there's no avoiding it there but I'd say the lion's share of that price difference has gone into the software. The software on the Synology platform is still some of the best we've seen in the whole NAS industry but if you're not going to use it and you're going to use third-party tools then that might be money you're just chucking away. And if, if, you, if you're using a NAS on your own and it's not going to be a multi-purpose platform for many, many users and apps, you might not see the advantage in that CPU or memory either. So if you are a singular or very small group of users, or you don't plan on using the applications the NAS arrived with, and you want to prioritize your own applications, the Nimbus Store might be the one for you. However, if you do want to buy a complete hardware software package or if you do want to buy a solution that ticks all the boxes go for the Synology it might be a bit more expensive but it will feel a much more complete purchase for those of you that need the first the third party and everything in between thank you so much for watching I hope you've enjoyed this video if you do have any questions about these two devices bung it in the comments and if there's any further I can do to help do visit the link to NAS Compares in the description click like if you've enjoyed this video click subscribe to learn more and I'll see you next time